Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending April the 8th, 2022. Interesting week, okay, the, the S&P just kind of held uh, right, in, right in no, no man's land, just kind of held uh, in, in the middle there. And uh, the NASDAQ took a little bit of be another beating on the chin and, um, and the yield curve, which we led with last week, turned out to be a good headline because we could forget about the yield curve. It only stayed inverted for about a day and a half to two days. And then it re it re steepened and uh, and straightened itself out to the degree that it has. It's still relatively flat, but uh, but at least it's not inverted anymore. The five year inverted for uh, a little bit, but that's not a, a big barometer. Uh, most analysts, it's the twos and tens. Okay, that's that's where we're looking at. So that's straightening out, and that came about in large part because of the Fed minutes that became open uh, news. And so analysts saw that most of the members on there had marked in their dot plots around a 50 basis points. And then Brainerd on Monday uh, afternoon came out with, or Tuesday, when it was early part of the week, she came out with her uh, statement that the Fed is going to aggressively address uh, rate hikes on the short end of the curve. So 50 basis points, uh, probably another one in May, maybe a handful of those coming down or sooner if need be, they said, uh, they get a grip. We'll, we'll know more after Tuesday, but let me finish the thought on the Fed. And then on the long end of the, of the curve, they're selling almost $100 billion a month in long bonds, okay? And so long securities off their, off their balance sheets. So 60% uh, of that is in treasuries. Uh, the other remaining part, a lot of that is in, is in mortgage-backed securities, which really is not enough out there in the market. $9 trillion on their balance sheet, uh, not enough in the market to absorb those kinds of sales. So probably what happens is they rotate off mortgage-backed securities in seven-year tranches as those, as those mature and just slough off the ledger uh, uh, kind of naturally by themselves with the passage of time. So. Uh, those are very aggressive rate hikes, okay, and so the, the, what the end of it is, is that with all analysts seeing this information, then probably uh, is a good argument to be made that all the rate hikes are baked in already, are already priced in to the short end of the curve. So uh, what does that mean to us? Well, uh, maybe bonds have bottomed at least for a minute and and we'll know more next tuesday when the uh it's it's this uh, consumer price index the cpi to ppi to, uh, and the producer price index are reported that's going to be the last big data point before the fed meets again in may so uh that's going to tell us you know about future in increases in rate hikes or a lot of analysts are saying that inflation has peaked in march and that uh, you know, and, and that would be good news. So if that be the case, then bonds may have found a bottom or are at are near to a bottom, and that gives us uh, more information about how to uh, get a total return for 2022, which is what our we've had to uh, shift our focus to because while you you see a lot of the news, it, it, it grabs your attention the ups and downs. Really what's happened over this uh, year to date right now is that we're really kind of moving sideways in a very sine wave, high cyclical sort of way. So we're looking to stabilize that volatility in, in, our, in our clients' portfolios and then provide total return to make up for the lack of price movement. So we start earnings season reports next week about Q1 2022, that will, that will tell us a whole lot more. In the meantime, we're opening up several different avenues of alternatives then for us to go in and achieve this total return place. So depending on a person's horizons, we may in a rising rate environment be able to get great yield out of certain safer uh, air quotes, uh, types of risk plays and some more guaranteed types of risk plays. So uh, that is what we're looking at. If that sounds interesting to you, by all means, reach out and contact us. Let's have a discussion and continue our conversations in terms of two year, one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year horizons here, and even 10, okay? 
uh, in terms of mitigating the risk exposure both to the markets but also for uh, people that are, are, are in, in, in Roth conversion shifting periods now, we can take that information and, and, and build models accordingly in order to achieve uh, the desired rates of return to guide us through that shifting period without worrying about withdrawal rate risk or sequence of returns risk creeping in and disrupting our, our shifting plan. So all of these things are possible and more. It's just a matter of getting together and having a discussion about what kind of suit you really want us to make for you, okay? Um, because we can help you if you'll let us, all right? We'll find a way to win if you'll let us, all right? Going to be a great weekend this weekend. It's a short trading week next week. It's a holiday week, and uh, and, and that's the last. A lot of big events uh, coming, so we'll see we'll see what, uh, what what transpires. But it looks like there may be some good news out there that opens up a lot of avenues again for us to uh, manage money and get people that have been on the sidelines back in and in, in a non risky way or, or, or risk mitigated uh, fashion so that you can get that uh, uh, that total return that you need because uh, with inflation as it is and you're having and prices going up um, you, you need all the help that you can get we're to the wise maybe buy an extra bottle of uh, cooking oil all right this week uh, and, and, and maybe it'll last you through the th through the whole summer together with what you have and maybe into next fall okay don't go crazy don't hoard just uh just word to the wise there all right have a great weekend until we see you again stay happy is the key to longevity